it's time let's to uh, dig in to dig in <laughs> let's uh so yeah so let's talk a little bit about uh this new uh uh yeah june 11th everybody um, it is, it is. <laughs> yeah uh so let's talk about draconic options uh more and more i feel like we're getting closer and closer to a dragon book of some sort and right. uh and 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 here we have some what they're what they're calling the draconic races so in this uh guide uh, this is this this is clearly yes. Uh, <laughs> Alpha Stream is correct. Uh, Draco Jammer clearly <laughs> has been. You've heard it here first. Draco right, Jammer we, confirmed. We scooped it. <laughs> scooped. <laughs> I want there to be a huge like across the screen scoop. Scoop. You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I'll I'll get that set up for a future scoop. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um. So as always, this is playtest material, and uh, it's free to download on uh, Wizards. This often will show up in the D and D Beyond app as well. Right. So and, uh, yeah, all the all the opportunity is, to just play around with this. Yeah, this is monthly. I mean, if you don't know about Unearthed Arcana, these have been coming out for quite some time, and these options you'll likely see in a future book. So if you're Absolutely. not keeping track, check them out. Uh, yeah, they're up on D and D Beyond uh, less than a week after they come out on the site. Yeah, um, by my experience, at least. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and and this is something that we'll 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 probably touch on every month just because we really enjoy it and uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, the draconic options, play test material. These are draconic races. These are uh, a few different variations on dragonborn and kobold. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, because kobold in uh, became a draconic race, I believe in the third edition, right? Because so, in second yeah. edition they were more like little dog like animals. Um, but here we are. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at our first one, which is the chromatic yeah. dragon. So this is a this is gonna be someone your this is your your more your vibrant colors, your your black, your blue, your green, your white, mm -hmm. uh those those particular uh uh dragonborn. So your your scales are gonna be like that. And you have oh, a chromatic ancestry, so you get to choose like if uh, in and that'll help direct what kind of damage type you have. So if right. you take black you'll have acid damage type. If you take blue, it'll be lightning, green, poison, so on and so forth. Um, so the first ability, let's talk about this real quick, is the breath weapon. So you create a 30-foot line uh, that each yeah. creature must make a deck save equal to 8 plus your con modifier plus proficiency bonus or take 2d8 damage. Um, this trait can be used equal to your proficiency bonus and you regain all ex uh, uses when you finish long rest. So one thing that I've really been enjoying in some of these these new races and these new character options is that your proficiency bonus is for more than just your proficiencies. I agree. So stand, standing out, standing out right for me is you can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. I think that's perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah. I I really enjoy that. Um, two D eight five. Foot the version that exists in the player's yeah. handbook right now. Yeah. Sorry, oh, keep going, keep going. Oh yeah, no, I was gonna say, you know, and I like that this this makes you when you take the chromatic, you get the uh, thirty foot, five foot wide line, um, and I don't think there's enough line attacks in in uh, fifth edition, so it's nice to get right. another one of those in there. Right, there's no variance in it, which is interesting. There's no, you know, the the lines versus cones, although um, they're a little bit differently broken up in the player's handbook. So I, mm -hmm. I kind of like breaking them up like this. If you are yep. a chromatic dragonborn, you will have a line instead. Uh, period. A line mm -hmm. of cold. <laughs> yep. Um, and they did up the damage as well from two d six to two d eight. Um, uh, it will still go up. Uh, so the proficiency bonus is kind of the biggest deal, getting more. And like you said, that mechanic's awesome. That should yeah. that should keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, and then starting at third level, we get the chromatic warding, uh, so that right. you can protect yourself from um, the energy type associated to your ancestry for ten minutes, so you become immune to that damage type. Uh, and you can't do it again until you finish a long rest. Right. There is nothing more sad than when you have a resistance. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. It's yeah. it's sad when you have fire resistance and then you still drop to fire damage. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all of my kids, whenever they play Dragonborn, they feel like they are immune to it because it's I don't know, it's it's easier. It makes more mm -hmm. sense to them, I think, than just half damage. So I like that you can do it, like add that option yeah. on here. <laughs> OK, OK. Yeah. For me, it's just it seems powerful, but then it's so situational. So I think, right. you know, uh, I, I think it's a good power. 
I I could see them adjusting this from ten minutes to one minute. Um, I think one minute oh, would sure. be would be would be a better ten minutes. Ten minutes means you're potentially diving through lava, but maybe there's no other way to dive through the lava. So you 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 kind of build your adventure around this particular ability. Like if you have this dragon board, yeah, so I've talked myself into it. I like it. Right, it's not bad. I think, um, and there, there we get our chromatic dragons. Right, that's traditionally the evil of the dragons, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we move on to the metallic ones. And I'm kind of interested in how these differentiate themselves from the chromatic versions. Yeah, so uh, let's yeah let's dig into that. So we have brass, bronze, copper, gold, and silver mm -hmm. chromatic dragons. Right. Uh, so where the changes begin to kick in is going to be the breath weapons. So right. each one is a 15 foot cone. The same DC. Same damage increases. Um, you have damage resistance, whereas... Oh, yeah, you do have damage resistance in the other one as well. I just missed it. Um, yeah, so, you know, similar, but instead now you have the cone. Right, close range, but more targets nearby. Mm -hmm. Sure, that's good. Yeah, I like that. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, at third level, instead of gaining immunity, you gain a second breath weapon. So uh, when you take the attack action, you can replace one of your attacks with an exhalation of magical gas in a 15-foot cone. That uh, same same uh, spell uh, DC or save DC. Uh, but then each creature in the aura must take a strength saving throw or be pushed 20 feet and knocked prone. Or right. each creature in the area must succeed on a con save or become incapacitated until the end of your next turn. Um, I think I think both of those options are pretty great. I agree. Yeah. And I like that it does reflect, um, you know, how dragons work in, in 5th edition at the very least, right? I believe that uh, the chromatic dragons do more damage over metallic ones have other options that they can do. So I like that they call that out here. Yeah. Um, I love, I think it's a... Brass dragons can put people to sleep, so I like the incapacitation here. <laughs> yeah, um, and then the last option, of course, is the of the dragonborn is the gem dragon. So let's go ahead and talk about the, the different seeds. So this is this amethyst, crystal, emerald, sapphire, and topaz. Interesting that they're bringing up gem dragons. We can talk about that later. Uh, so I this know, one yeah. is yeah. Uh, once again, it's a fifteen foot cone, dexterity saving throw, con same 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 deal. Um, uh, let's see. Was the other one dexterity saving throw? Oh, uh, I think they all are. Yeah, right? I think so. No, uh, why, oh, sorry, I meant the 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 special one uh, from the this special breath weapon. It's DC. Oh no, it oh. says it must succeed strength or con. That's what I was getting confused on. So gotcha, gotcha. Anyway, so so yeah, so that's uh, damage based on the once again the kind of of gem dragon you are. Uh, you have resistance <laughs> type, which means you do. There's a way to get resistance to force and psychic uh, now. And then, of course, there's cool. the psionic mind, which I, I like that this one's different, a little bit different too, right? You can uh, communicate with people within 30 feet of you. I think is good. You must be able to understand languages. And then at third level, level you get flight. And this is why I think the other one that was from 10 minutes will probably get dropped down to one minute because this is a. Uh, you know, you 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 summon gems that turn into wings or something, and yeah, yeah. you fly for a minute. I think is good. I agree. But a minute, I think that's right? good. Yeah. Right. So maybe not ten. Um. So let's see. You maybe you can correct me. What what I recall from Gem Dragonborn or Gem mm -hmm. Dragons is that they came up during the Psionic era, right? Uh, I feel like chromatic mm -hmm. dragons were generally more wizardly. Um. Metallic dragons, more cleric, well, paladin, you know, somewhere in there. And gem dragons arose in the psionic. That's that's kind of times. how I remember it as well. Okay. Yeah. And I thought they spit lozenges that <laughs> exploded out in clouds. Uh, I can't remember exactly. Um, that's I that's mean, what I remember about their breath right, weapon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sad that's not in here. Um, I do really like the way they've got these set up. Uh, just by in a mechanical sense, I love mm -hmm. that this is no longer an action to use your breath weapon. It's just now part of an attack action. It takes an attack. If you are the mm -hmm. barbarian and you rush in and you cleave something and then you want to blast everyone, you can do that now. And uh, yeah. I love that as an option. That's a good change. That is that is solid. Yeah, so so far, I think I like the Dragonborn changes. I'm, I'm yeah. into it. I hope a lot of the races and species and ancestries get a revamp. Uh, one of them I that I always <laughs> thought needed a revamp is the Kobold. Yeah. Right. Um, 
kobolds uh super interesting i i do love like getting into the draconic ideas of kobolds like these little creatures that are just waiting for their inner dragon to like burst out and then they'll mm -hmm. start flying um yeah i always try and dig into that as much as i can <laughs> yeah um all right so kobolds uh they get dark vision so they can see 60 feet they get draconic and you notice that they don't have the weakness anymore uh Great. they draconic legacy so uh you have advantage on saving throws to avoid or into frightened condition, perfect for a kobold, right? Uh, you yeah. know one cantrip of your choice from the sorcerer spell list, intelligence, wisdom, or charisma is that uh, a casting ability, fantastic. You make an unarmed strike with your tail, uh, and you, if you hit with it, it uh, deals 1d6 plus strength modifier, bludgeoning damage. Um, and I think that's great too. I, I, I like that. That's, that's not one I would have considered normally, is, is thinking about a tail attack. But I love right. I love natural weapons. I, I love I love tail attacks. <laughs> Whereas you know me, I don't. So the option to not take that is great for me. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So you know, like, so if I were going to choose one, I would probably, I probably wouldn't choose that. I would actually, yeah, it depends on the build, right? Maybe it I does. would choose it if I was a monk. That'd be sweet. I mean, that's fair. Um, I, yeah, because you can't finesse it. It's a strength only. Um, yeah. This would be tough. I mean, depending on the character, uh, just not being frightened would be awesome if I was playing mm -hmm. some kind of big melee build. Uh, but I do love a good cantrip. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were discussing cantrips uh, as we were getting warmed up. What cantrip would you go for? Too many uh, good ones. <laughs> yeah. uh, so so this is the the interesting one is draconic roar. So as a bonus action, you let out your draconic war roar, and enemies within ten feet uh, it, it targets enemies within ten feet of you, and until your mm -hmm. end of your next turn, your allies have advantage on attack rolls against any of those enemies who could hear the roar. Um, I I like this, right. but I don't know that I would call it a roar. That doesn't seem to fit like I, I i would like draconic distraction or something like that right where right, right. You, you you do something and it could be anything like it could be your blood curdling scream it could be a uh the your your draconic poetry because you uh -huh. know their, their their poetry is much like data's poetry it's mm -hmm. it's accurate and right. um you know you could do something like that and i think it would be better to be a distraction uh, but the roar itself is, it, I think it fits for people on the trail to dragons. But face it, your kobold is never going to be a dragon. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is really interesting. I feel like this is a version of pack tactics, but for players, which I think is cool. Yeah. But, you know, when I look at like the Leonin and their daunting roar, like, you know, the massive, powerful creatures and their roar makes someone terrified or frightened, um, mm -hmm. which I like thematically as a roar, uh, a roar that like skits your party active and involved in fighting and gives them all advantage mm -hmm. um yeah i'd, I'd retheme that myself i think but I, yeah. I do like this this idea of kobold poetry um yeah because it feels <laughs> it's totally a support option it's a great support option <laughs> yeah all right yeah. uh and cool. then on this in this guide you know they don't do this very often but uh there are a few extra feats there is a gift of the chromatic dragon. So as a bonus action, uh, mm. you can imbue uh, a, a weapon with uh, acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison. Uh, and then whenever you take that kind of damage, you can use your reaction to give yourself resistance to that instance of the damage. Pretty mm -hmm. sweet. I think that's yeah. pretty imbalanced. And then to kind of like line up with what you were saying before, gift of the metallic dragon, you learn the cure wound spell. And you cast that spell without expending a spell slot. Uh, once you cast it this way, you can't do it until you finish a long rest. So you know that kind of that kind of leans into that. And you can also manifest wings uh, that can shield you and others from attacks. So that's very that's very in line with the paladin right. and that type of stuff. Protective wings is such a cool idea. So I'm very right. happy to see that option here. Yeah, and then uh, we're not going to get into spells. The spells are going to be a little too nitty gritty, but let's talk about Gift of Gem Dragon real quick. This one, you increase your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma by one. I like the feats that have a uh, a stat boost. And then yep. on top of that, you uh, when you take damage from a creature that is within 10 feet of you, you can use uh, your telekinetic energy uh, to um, uh, deal damage back. So it's like a, a psychic protection, and you push people yeah. away. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a ton cool of fun. One. Um, yeah, and we aren't going to look at the spells, but I'm interested in how many of them have dragons' names in the beginning. I mean, there's going to yep. be some named dragons in this book that is certainly coming out. <laughs> yep. I mean, come on, look at this. Yeah, um, I'm so excited. Draco Jammer. Yeah, I'm super excited uh, for Draco Jammer. 
Yeah. Uh, and speaking of of epic dragons, uh, there 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 is no setting more epic filled with dragons <laughs> than Draco Jammer. But beyond yes. that, I believe it's time to head over to our first guest. Are you ready, Rich? I am ready. Uh, although, real quick, just if you are playing the Unearthed Arcana and talk about the options, you can drop into the Saving Through Discord, into the Owlbear Soup channel, and tell us all about it, because I want to know how these Draconic options go for you. 